Hi, everybody. My name is Sandy Virtue, and I wanted to spend a few minutes today talking to you about um, the classes I teach in the neuroscience program and some of the research that I conduct in my lab. So I am both a professor in the psychology department and the neuroscience program, and I am associate director of the neuroscience program. I teach the neuroscience capstone class, which is a really fun class. We focus on what's happening in, in the brain while people process different aspects of language, which is also my research area. So in the capstone class, we talk about first language acquisition. We talk about what happens in the brain when you're learning a new language or you are learning multiple languages. Uh, we also discuss um, how different language disorders uh, and aphasias um, are caused and different potential treatments for those uh, types of aphasias. Um, we even look at how music is processed in the brain in a similar manner to how you learn a language. Uh, so it's a really fun class. You also conduct a grant proposal throughout the quarter. So you're coming up with a new research idea and um, writing a document and then presenting that in class as well. So you kind of have a little bit of idea of what my research is, um, but let me tell you a little bit more about it. Um, I'm interested in understanding how the left and right hemispheres of the brain work together uh, as we read text. So uh, interestingly, uh, when research started on this, we thought that the left hemisphere was a sole processor of language. However, when we looked more closely at individuals who had damage in the right hemisphere, we actually found that the right hemisphere plays an important role as well. So one of the common examples I give students in my classes is I talk about, let's say you were standing at the door with a handful of books and there was someone who was suffering from right hemisphere damage next to you. If you ask them, can you open the door for me? They would likely say yes, but actually fail to open the door. So they don't understand, they understand the explicit meaning, but often they have difficulty with that implied message that, that occurs. Um, and so we see this often with individuals who have damage in the right hemisphere. They have trouble with humor, so choosing the correct punchline, um, sarcasm, idioms, puns. And so we study um, those kinds of aspects of language in my lab. Um, we also look at um, what's happening in the brain during a neuromarketing tasks. So we moved into looking at real world ads that contain metaphors. For example, if you were given the ad, these jeans are green, it doesn't mean they're literally the color green. It means that they're made in an environmentally friendly way. So we wanna see how do people understand that and how does a brain process that information? We also look at trademarks in the brain. So previous research uh, in the legal system actually use a lot of surveys to make distinctions between different brand logos. And we wanna use neuroscience to see if we can find out more information about how people are processing similar logos uh, to one another. Uh, we're also looking at how the language of conspiracy theories might influence believability and neural processing. And we've also recently started a new study looking at the interaction of emojis and text. So we want to see if you're given an ambiguous text, how does the emoji influence the processing of that language? So if you were given the text, I love your dress, and then a winky face emoji, does that mean you really love the person's dress or you're trying to be a little bit sarcastic with the emoji? So we're looking at that. Well, uh, it was great sharing a little bit about my research with you. Um, and if you have any questions about the neuroscience program, my research lab, or anything else I can help out with, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thanks very much.